Hey guys, this is Brendan with Evoke Bike. We're here today to talk about work, talk about kilojoules. You can look at hours, but this is an easy way to step back and take a look at the forest and see your training. This is really for riders that have been racing, riding, training for three or more years, let's say. And I had an athlete that I was talking to and we were looking back at just the increase in workload. In 2014, we'll start there and go up, um, looking at his kilojoules for a season. And then we're gonna talk about how this applies to racing against people that he just considered were better than him. But when you compare the work that this other athlete is doing, that's the big difference. And then we flipped it backwards. Okay, well, how can you get to that number? Because he's a busy executive, he has a family, but he's competitive and his comment was hey i just i'm gonna keep to my plan but i'm just not on that level and i'm like well you're not on that level because there's weekly and daily choices that if you can just do a little bit more that little bit more over 52 weeks adds up to be a lot in 2014 he did 20,000 kj didn't ride that much 2015 40,000 okay he's getting into cycling 2016 104,000 2017 176 2018 178 2019, 219. Then he starts not coasting. He doesn't always do the coasting group rides. He focuses on intervals. When he has a two hour ride, he rides two hours. So 2020, he does 260,000 KJs. So I said to him, hey, 2021, can you hit 300,000? I mean, 300,000 from 2016, you're gonna triple the work that you've done just five years ago try to tell anyone that they're not going to be a better cyclist by doing that, right? And then you can look at it in an even more granular way. Look at a race that he did. There's some a lot of like, you know, early gravel races, two and a half hours, let's say. You might do 2,000 KJs. Look at how many of those rides you've done and where did you stack them in the season. So in 2017, he only did eight. In 2018, he did 14. In 2019, he did 25, and in 2020, we hit 34. So I said, okay, 2021, let's hit 52, you know? Or two times, so two times a month, that's gonna be 48, and sprinkle another couple in, and you've got it, you're right there. His comment was, one of the guys that's on the podium, he's like, well, I just can't ride that much. I think that person I looked on Strava did 625 hours. This guy was doing 445. And I said, well, 445, you know, what's a long week? Long week to him is 13 hours. If he does 12, that's great. I said, dude, all, if you trained every week, which there are rest weeks, so every week's not gonna be 10, but for sim simplification of math, 52 times 10, you're at 520. You've just basically increased 60 hours because the rest weeks are gonna stay the same as the previous year. So you're just increasing those actual weeks that you're doing work. So now you're at 520, you're only 100 hours less than this dude. Like find a few weeks, okay, maybe my second week of a training block, I'm gonna say I'm getting two more hours in. Okay, so if you have uh, 12 more, that's maybe another 30 hours that you can sprinkle in. Like this just shows there's ways to optimize more hours, but also cut out some of the recovery rides. If, the, if time is really sensitive, although there's great benefit to doing them, you'll you'll benefit more from taking that hour on, if you do one on Monday and Friday and say, okay, I'm not gonna ride those days. I'm gonna add that, that's two hours, take it and add an hour onto a three hour ride. And now instead of doing a two hour ride on Saturday, you're doing a three hour ride. And then every Saturday you're doing 2100 KJ. Okay, maybe even more, maybe then you, you start being able to do those and then you say, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do a two by 20 threshold effort in there. That's gonna raise the KJs up. Like work matters. And as we start to create these pillars that we're talking about, if you listen to uh, Stephen Bassett, consistency, you're gonna hear some stuff from Robin Carpenter coming up in an upcoming interview. Consistency, the number one pillar for Evoke Bike is consistency. No matter what you do, you have to do it often. The other one is straight up work. I'm putting jewels down as a pillar. You have to do work. You have to pedal the bike. Even if you go out and consistently do something, the caveat is you can't consistently go out and do a group ride where you're coasting all the time. That's not enough work. That's not enough pedaling. If you're going out and doing 400, 500 KJs in your normal size male, it's just not enough. 
Um, or I should say it might be enough, but you could do much more. So this is a quick video to help you look at how to step back from the day-to-day -day workouts and literally look at what you're doing, what wattage you're producing. So look at the seasons, how many total KJs have you done? Is it getting more, is it getting less? Maybe why did it get less if it did? Were you racing more and you had to taper more? Like there could be times where you have less as opposed to like COVID year is probably gonna be a lot of KJs. So this might be an outlier. Then look at how many KJs you put out on race days, get an average. Look then at how many of those training sessions have the same amount of work. It doesn't have to match up, but if you're doing races where you're putting out 3000 KJs in a ride and you're only doing 3000 KJs in training five or 10 times, see how you can increase that number. That's clearly gonna help you out because when you're only doing the longest ride being the race, it's really hard to be strong at that portion of the race because you're usually finishing your ride. You're in like cool down mode and this is when everyone's starting to really kit it and crush it. Um, and then just ask yourself, how can you optimize weekly? I've always used the example, I think it was going from the eight hour week to the nine hour week is a 12 and a half percent increase in training. It, it still blows my mind, the, the, but the numbers, like a lot of people train eight hours a week, make it nine, and you just increase your training 12 and a half percent. So there's little ways to do more work that is going to allow you to do the work over and over again. You're not going out and just blasting a random 15 hour week, but it's this micro win week after week after week after week, and it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. And it builds. So. Take a look at your work, figure out how to optimize it, and you will become a faster cyclist. Thanks for watching. Please share this with a friend if you think they could use some help in understanding how to use work more effectively. Like the video, please subscribe. We're trying, trying to hit 2,000 subscribers, and we appreciate it. Thanks again, have a good day.